Hey guys, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about confidence, while we take a look at the story of a couple of guys who stood up to some serious pressure. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about confidence, which is living like you believe God is with you. Want to try my favorite gaming snack? Straight from the tube or, or jar? What, what is that? The very best way. Um, don't try this at home, kids. Mm. You know, put anybody better under pressure. Sometimes I don't even know what's happening around here. No, peanut butter is better under pressure. Here. Peanut butter is better under pressure. Okay. Like the guys in today's story. In my experience, peanut butter is worse under pressure. See, no, that's not enough pressure. Enough pressure for what? Under enough pressure, this becomes this. Peanut butter turns into a cuddly stuffed animal? No. Under enough pressure, peanut butter can turn into real, legit diamonds. This looks more like cheap costume jewelry. Well, our budget definitely does not spring for real diamonds. But we can buy peanut butter, which apparently makes diamonds. Diamonds are formed from carbon. And do you know what peanut butter is full of? I'm going to say carbon? Yep. Natural diamonds are formed from carbon miles and miles under the Earth's surface at more than 2,000 degrees. Eventually, they get spit up to the surface by volcanoes. So what about the peanut butter? Well, you know that saying, you have to have money to make money? Well, you gotta have diamonds to make diamonds. In the lab, scientists use something called the stiletto effect. Here, hold this. The stiletto effect is where they take peanut butter and put it between two highly compressed diamonds at very high temperatures. Okay, push. Hard. Harder. <laughs> and voila. Diamonds are formed. But real diamonds, not fake plastic ones. I think these are glass? Peanut butter diamonds. I'm gonna look at my lunch in a whole new way. Just add pressure. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the Book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Then Jesus gave up his life. But on the third day, he rose again. Forty days later, Jesus returned to heaven to be with God. But he left his followers with an amazing gift the help of God's Holy Spirit. Through the help of God's Spirit, the early church grew by leaps and bounds. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, I'm Brian. Well, just a short time ago, Peter and John had been ordinary fishermen, but three years with Jesus had changed them. And now they were walking each day with the help of God's Holy Spirit as they led and encouraged the people who decided to follow Jesus. One day, as Peter and John went up to the temple to pray, a man who couldn't walk reached out to them. Now, this man had never walked a single step in his whole life, more than 40 years. Spare a few coins, please. Peter and John looked straight at the man. Look at us. The man fixed all his attention on Peter and John, hoping for a big gift. I don't have any silver or gold, but I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Peter took the man's hand. Instantly, the bones in the man's feet and ankles shifted into place, and his muscles became strong. Wait, what? My, my feet? I can stand? I can walk! I can jump! Wow! Look at this! The man took a short jump. Then he leapt into the air. He began to dance, <laughs> laughing and crying all at once. Praise God, I can walk! I can walk! 
the man danced right into the temple with Peter and John, his joy overflowing in praise to God. People stopped to stare in amazement. They recognized him as the man who had sat for so many years outside the gate. Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? This man whom you see and know was made strong because of faith in Jesus' name. Faith in Jesus has healed him completely. Peter knew God had opened up an incredible opportunity to help people understand who Jesus really is. As the crowd grew in size, Peter continued, God had given a promise through all the prophets, and this is how he has made his promise come true. He said that his Messiah would suffer. So turn away from your sins, turn to God, then your sins will be wiped away. As the crowd packed in even more tightly, the religious leaders took notice, but their presence didn't stop Peter. The covenant God made with your people long ago is yours also. He said to Abraham, all nations on earth will be blessed through your children. God raised up Jesus. God sent him first to you to bless you. Thank you, Lord. I want to follow Jesus. Me too. Right then and there, hundreds of people began to believe in Jesus. In fact, the new believers now numbered nearly 5,000. You can bet the religious leaders were not happy about this. I thought we were done with all this Jesus nonsense. Mm, the courtyard is packed. They've been at it for hours now, preaching. And the people are buying it. Shut it down! We'll deal with them tomorrow. The religious leaders were so upset they had Peter and John thrown in prison overnight. The next morning, guards hauled them out and took them to stand before the elders and teachers, including the high priest Annas and other members of his family. The man who had been healed was back at the temple too, praising God. To the leaders, he was a pesky problem. They began to sharply question Peter and John. By what power did you do this? And through whose name? Peter and John had spent the night in a jail cell. They were probably must and rumpled, especially compared to all the religious leaders in their rich robes. But none of that made Peter and John back down. Rulers and elders of the people, do you want to know why we were kind to a man who couldn't walk? Are you asking how he was healed? Then listen to this. You nailed Jesus Christ to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. It is through Jesus' name that this man stands healed in front of you. Scripture says that Jesus is the stone you builders did not accept, but it has become the most important stone of all. You can't be saved by believing in anyone else. Annas and the other religious leaders were floored. They were used to calling the shots and having the final say, and, and yet two uneducated fishermen had just stood up to them without flinching? Ugh. Annas was so unnerved, he ordered Peter and John to, to leave while they talked things over. What can we do with these men? It appears being with Jesus has changed them. Well, we can't say it didn't happen. All of Jerusalem knows by now they performed a miracle. We have to stop this. We can't let it spread any further. We'll give them a warning. Yes. They have to stop this Jesus thing immediately. We have decided you must never speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Which is right from God's point of view. Should we listen to you or should we listen to God? You be the judges. That's, that's, no, oh, just don't do it. The religious leaders couldn't figure out how to punish Peter and John. So in the end, they let him go. And all the people continued to praise God for healing the man who couldn't walk. The end. Wow, I'm just trying to imagine. I mean, this guy had never taken a single step in his entire life. And then suddenly he's on his feet, leaping and dancing. And just think about Peter. I mean, not too long ago, he couldn't even tell a servant girl that he knew Jesus. And now he's facing down the most important Jewish leaders like no big deal. I want to be bold like that. So what's our part in the story? Peter and John were living with the strength of God's Holy Spirit. They knew that no matter what happened, God was with them and that God would bring good out of the situation. And we can experience the Holy Spirit too. That's right. When you choose to follow Jesus, God promises to be with you always. 
God's Spirit is always present and at work in your life. And anytime you have questions or, or going through something really difficult, there's a helper right there. And that can give you the kind of confidence that Peter and John had. When you have a, a big gymnastics meet, God is with you. Or if you have to take a lot of tests at the hospital, God is with you. When you are in a huge argument with your friend, God is with you. Yeah, all you have to do is call out to God, whether that's out loud or quietly straight from your heart. It could even be God help. And you can be confident that God will walk with you through whatever it is that you face. Yeah, it doesn't always mean the hard situation will go away. But it does mean that you never have to face it on your own. And that is the biggest confidence booster ever. It sure is. See you next time. So, here's the thing. God is with you no matter what. Are you gonna eat that? Be my guest. Think if I chew hard enough I can make diamonds? Ew, just don't make us watch. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. <laughs>